This is the Eclipse i-Series 9700i portable intelligent automatic flushing station that attaches to any fire or flushing hydrant with a 2.5 inch NST connection. It comes in a lockable powder coated aluminum enclosure with a telescoping support leg. This unit features a built-in amperometric chlorine analyzer with no reagents required, a built-in programmable logic controller or PLC with two micro SD cards and two standard SD adapters, a quarter inch solenoid operated sampling valve. It features separate levels for sampling controls and diagnostics as well as flushing functions with a two inch diaphragm solenoid operating flushing valve. It operates using a portable 24 VDC rechargeable power unit that locks onto the intelligent flusher providing intermittent 30 hours of power. Unlike regular automatic flushing systems that operate on a daytime duration schedule, intelligent flushing revolves around sampling. Using the PLC, the user would program the PLC's minimum residual level. Additionally, they would program the PLC's desired residual level. Once the minimal and desired levels have been set, the user would program sampling sequence times when the unit will test residual levels. Additionally, the user would program an initial blow-off time, a chlorine buffer time, which eliminates any possible errant readings, sampling duration time, the length of time the unit will sample if above the minimum level, and a fail-safe maximum total flushing time. Once this information has been inputted, the unit will automatically maintain residual program parameter levels in the following order of events. At the program sampling time, the unit will begin with the initial blow-off to remove old water and obtain a sample from the main, usually one to three minutes. Once the sample is obtained and analyzed, the station will do one of the following. If the sampled water's residual level is below the program minimum chlorine level, the unit will begin to flush all while continuing to sample. Once the sampled water's chlorine level reaches the program desired residual level, both valves shut off. Initial and final chlorine levels, time of day, and flush duration data is automatically recorded on the PLC and is available for download onto the micro SD card. If the sample water's residual level is above the program minimum chlorine level, the unit will continue to sample and check to make sure the residual doesn't drop below the minimum residual level for the sample duration time. As long as the residual level remains above the minimum level, no additional flushing occurs. Initial and final chlorine levels, time of day, and flush duration data is recorded onto the PLC and is available for download onto the micro SD card. A third scenario, if sampled water residual level is below the program minimum chlorine level, the unit will begin to flush and continue to sample. If the sample does not achieve the program desired residual level, the unit will continue to flush until the programmed maximum total flushing time has been reached. Both valves will close, ending the sampling sequence. Initial and final chlorine levels, time of day, and flush duration data is recorded onto the PLC and is available for download onto the micro SD card. Eight sampling times per day are available. The PLC is fully customizable to the end user's needs, and SCADA communication upgrades are also available. Part of the routine maintenance for the i-Series is occasionally recalibrating the unit's analyzer about every two to three weeks on average, depending on water quality. Replacing the probe membrane and electrolyte about every three months on average, again, depending on water quality. Cleaning the sampling valve screen filter as needed. Remove the micro SD card to manually retrieve data and information from the site. Occasionally, debris will get caught in the diaphragm inside the valve. To do maintenance on the valve, first unscrew the solenoid from the valve. Next, unscrew the bolts on the valve face. Open the valve carefully and remove any debris around the outer ring. Then remove the diaphragm and clean away any debris around the edge. Be sure also to clean any debris around the diaphragm seat inside the valve. Finally, using a common paper clip, clean out the hole in the solenoid opening. Once clean, reassemble the unit, making sure to line up the diaphragm tab with the seat.